Welcome to the last topic that we'll cover in this course. After this, we will continue doing some more quantum mechanics, but that will be part of a separate course, which will, will be quantum mechanics part two. Okay, so now we have to see the addition of angular momentum. This is a topic in which we see what happens if we have some system in which there are at least two uh, forms of angular momentum. They can be the same as in orbital, orbital angular momentum, or just spin and spin angular momentums, or just a mix of both. So since there are different types of angular momentum that we have seen, even though they behave the same way, but we have uh, separated them, we're going to use the letter J for this total angular momentum, which can be this mix of orbital and spin angular momentum. Notice that this addition is not really the algebraic addition. This is more of a conceptual addition. So what we want to do here is that we want to take the spins for some system and take all of the possible combinations that it can have with another system. And then we need to find, well, what are going to be the coefficients of each state? Those are called the Klebsch-Gordon coefficients. And we, our task is to determine those coefficients. So this topic is usually taught in a very confusing manner in books, but I'm going to try to make it very simple here. So our goal is to find the, those coefficients. And the best way to do this is with an example. So let's go with this example. Let's say we have two particles with spin one half. Maybe it's a proton and an electron, like in the hydrogen atom, or maybe it's any, anything else. It doesn't really matter to us right here. The main thing is we have some spin one, which is going to be one half. And of course, this can have the values m1 is one half or minus one half. And we can have another state, s2, which is going to be also with spin one half. So of course, it's m2 values can be one half and minus one half. Okay, that's what we have seen before. If there's any question with this, then you should go back to a previous video about spin because this is something that we need to know right now. Okay, and now if we combine these two states, then what are going to be the possible values of spin? What are going to be the eigenvectors here? Let's see. So what is done here is that the total spin st is going to be the addition of these two. So it's going to be the one half plus one half, which is going to be one. So since this is s, and remember, this will also mean, of course, that we can take the value zero. Whenever we saw we had some, some L1, for example, when we saw orbital angular momentum, we can also take L0 since L, L can be that any of these integers from zero to that positive quantity that we have determined. So whenever we determine this number here, this is more of like the upper value that we can have. Okay, so that's very important. We have these two possibilities. S can be one or, or zero. And of course, that this means that then m total for this case, for example, when, when s is 1, it's going to be minus 1, 0, 1. And for the case 0, m total is simply going to be 0. So what is going to happen here is basically we're going to combine this total spin, just adding it up to see what is this maximum allowed s, total s. And then also we're going to combine every single m. Now, for now, this is just conceptual, so let's actually begin working with the problem. Usually what we want to do, and this is the easiest way, so this is the procedure. So, well, if you are using a table, you know, there exist these tables with the Klebsch-Gordon coefficients, and basically you just look at the table, you tell it what your spin values are, and it spews out all the coefficients. But usually in tests, you probably have to work them out yourself, and this is how you do it. So you begin with either the top or the bottom levels, like the highest or the lowest values for m in the highest value of s. So I like to do highest s and s total, of course, and highest m total. So in this case, that means 1, 1. This ket represents s total, m total. And you can also write this, for example, as one half, one half, where each one of these is going to be the s of each one of the particles, and then co semicolon, and then the values for their respective m's, so m1, m2. I have also seen notation where you write it as s1, m1, s2, m2. It doesn't matter. 
The main thing is that you need to understand what this is. This is just a representation of the system and it can be very, very, very helpful. So let's see what is going to be. So this is the first state already. We know that if S is one, that means these are going to be one half, one half. And we're also going to have these one half, one half here since M total is one. And for that, we need both of the M ones and M two to be one half. How can we go here? to some other state. For example, let's now take a look at 1, 0. Well, we don't really know 1, 0. We can imagine that it's some combination of 1 half and minus 1 half. But we don't really know what the coefficients would be. So in order to find them, this is the best procedure. We apply the lowering operator to this state. So we want to say, okay, we apply the lowering operator. So st minus, this is the same operator that we have seen before acting on 1, 1, and this is going to be the same. Well, what, what is this? This is simply going to be the lowering operator of 1 plus the lowering operator of 2. And this has to act on the state 1 half, 1 half, semicolon, 1 half, 1 half. And now we go ahead and we do this. Remember, if we have some operator, the raising operator acting on some state, uh, SM, this is h bar square root of s, s plus 1 minus m, m minus 1. Okay? And this is acting on s, comma, m minus 1. So let's apply this to what we have up here. So the first part, this total operator, well, what is s? We get h bar square root of s, which is 1, so here we get 2 minus 1, because m is 1, 1 minus 1, which is 0, so we get 2 minus 0. So this is simply the square root of 2. And this is now multiplying 1, 0. That's why we chose the lowering operator. You could also have started from the state 1, minus 1, which would be here with minus 1 half, minus 1 half, and then work your way up. That's also possible. I like this, however, because as we see later, we will also continue to climb down. So I think that this is considerably less confusing. Well, let's now continue. So we have this state here. Now let's apply the lowering operators to this. So S1 only acts on the particles of this first system. So this is S1, this is M1, this is S2, this is M2. So S1 will only act on this first part. So we get H bar and then we have square root of s, s plus 1, s is 1 half, so 1 half, then we have 1 half plus 1, and then we have minus m, which is also 1 half, 1 half minus 1, and the square root of all of this. So what is this? This is minus 1 half times minus 1 half, that is positive 1 fourth. And this right here is 3 fourths. So three fourths, that doesn't look like a three. So here we simply have four divided by four, which is one. So we're simply going to get h bar. And now this is multiplying this ket. Now the values for s remain the same. However, the value for m1 changes. It is going to be m, this is going to be m1 minus one. So it's going to be minus one half here, comma one half. And you can see that the, when you add the values of m, they indeed give you this m total, which is going to be zero. And that's what we expected. So now let's go for plus h bar. Now we have to let the second one act on this state. And since it's the value for m2 is the same as the one we had for m1, we are also going to get just h bar times one half, one half, one half, comma, minus one half. This time it is the second one that got changed. So in order for us to find this state 1, 0, we now have to divide by this quantity. So we get that 1, 0 is going to be 1 over the square root of 2 times 1 half, 1 half minus 1 half, 1 half plus 1 half, 1 half, 1 half minus 1 half. So this is the state. So the, the Klebsch Gordon coefficients would basically be what numbers go with each one of these vectors. 
but by using these lowering operators we can actually calculate them ourselves and we don't need any sort of table okay so let me copy this and go to the next page and now let's apply the lowering operator once again so that we can find the the state 1 comma minus 1 so in order to find 1 comma minus 1 we're going to need to apply this lowering operator to this so when we do that we get h bar square root of what is s s is still 1 so we still get 2 minus m m minus 1 but m is 0 so that's going to be 0 so we still get square root of 2 here and now the state is going to be 1 comma minus 1 and this is equal to 1 over the square root of 2. Don't forget to include this in your calculation. And now we have to apply the lowering operator to this part right here. Let's begin with S1, the lowering operator for S1. Well, when we do that, we're going to take this value for M1 and take it to minus 1 of this, so minus 3 halves. But that is not inside of the possible values. So that is simply going to be 0. That's not a possible state. And in fact, if that is going to be the result if you just do a calculation, but conceptually we know that that's just outside of our range, so that's zero. Now we can do that for S2, and that value is not going to be zero. So we get h bar square root of S, S plus 1, which is going to be 3 quarters, minus 1 half times minus 1 half. So once again, this is going to be 1, so we just get h bar. And our state is going to be 1 half, 1 half, semicolon minus one half minus one half and then we have the second state here and what is this going to be this is going to be plus h bar and once again here when s1 acts it's going to be non-zero but when s2 acts this part right here is going to go to minus three halves so that is not a valid result so we will only get one of the possible results here because the other one is zero and it's going to be h bar times this square root but the square root is once again going to be one so now this is going to be state one half one half semicolon minus one half minus one half so here we get well we, we can now divide by h bar square root of two so that this here is alone so the h bar cancel out we get one over two times and these two states are identical so we get two times one half one half minus one half one half uh, minus one half and the twos here cancel out so let's just get rid of that so this is our lower state so that was the way to do this for the case when s total was one so now let's see what happens is s total is zero so that's what we're going to do now so let's go then to a new page and here let's find this cat zero zero now usually what is done and that's why we started with the case for s equals one now when it's zero zero well this there are going to be two possibilities so one will have some coefficient and this state is going to be one half one half since our particles are spin one half and then one of them is going to have to be minus one half and one of them is going to have one half in their m values so that the total m is zero plus b and then we have still their s is one half because that's the, spin, the value that these particles have it cannot change one half comma minus one half so we are these a and b coefficients that we need to determine and here we have to use two conditions and that's basically that these states are going to be orthonormal so that means that if we take the state 0, 0 with 0, 0, well, this state has to be, uh, this has to give us 1, this has to be normalized. So what, are, what does that condition mean? That means maybe I would need more space, so maybe I could do this down here. So this means that if we take this right here, we're going to get 1 half, 1 half as bra minus 1 half, 1 half, and then we have the conjugate of a times a so we're going to get just its absolute value and then the ket one half one half minus one half 
one half plus the absolute value of b squared and then one half one half one half comma minus one half one half comma one half and then one half comma minus one half and both of these are going to be one since these states are normalized now because the part that is not normalized is covered by these constants a and b so we get that a squared plus b squared have to be equal to one so now we have the first condition the second condition is that these states have to be normalized uh, sorry they have to be orthogonal to other states and now we are going to pick something clever because let's take a look at the other states that we have found uh, which are let me see right here yes so this is for example one zero one zero is made out of which of these eigenvectors take a look it's minus one it's one half one half minus one half one half and here it's one half minus one half and those are actually the same that we have here right zero zero is minus one half one half and one half minus one half so the trick that we need to use for the orthogonality condition is that we take one comma zero and zero zero we take their inner product so let's write this out so the state one comma zero maybe i'll do this in the next page so that we can have some more room so this is the state one zero and the state zero zero is this one right here okay so now let's take their inner product and it should be equal to zero so let's take the cat of this and let's see so one over square root of two that's sorry the bra of this i meant and that's a real number so it's conjugate is the same then we have one half one half minus one half comma one half and of course then when we apply the the inner product to this other state when this one is applied on this one because they are different states their product is going to be zero so we i'm going to just multiply right away and leave this only with this part right here so it's going to be times a maybe i'll just write the a in front here and then one half one half minus one half one half and then we have plus this second state which is one half comma one half colon one half comma minus one half and this one is now only going to survive when it acts on this b part so one half one half colon one half minus one half so once again these states here are normalized so what we get is that a divided by the square root of two plus b divided by the square root of two i'm missing a parenthesis there this has to be equal to zero and this means that a has to be equal to minus b okay so now we have two equations we have a equal to minus b and a squared i don't know why my pen is acting up let's see okay so and a squared plus b squared is equal to one but since a is equal to minus b, we can just plug that in there and we see that two times this a squared has to be equal to one. So a squared, whoops, not a squared, just a, is equal to one over the square root of two. And since uh, it can be either plus or minus, but since they have opposite sign, we can just pick one. And since they are arbitrary constant, one will be positive, the other one will be negative. That's the important part and b is going to be minus one over the square root of two. So this means that our state zero comma zero is simply going to be this. So it's going to be one over square root of two, this right here minus the other one. Okay, so now we have found all of our states. We found one comma one, one comma zero, one comma minus one, zero comma zero, and with the respective coefficients. So now we have seen what happens in this case where we have added these two values for angular momentum. Now I'm going to leave this video at this and we will see some more examples and some other possibilities in the next video. So I will see you then.